Alright, this morning we're going to learn how to check if a table exists. And so, for those of you who are looking for the answer really quickly, we will do it this way. Okay, uh, so one of the one thing to note is right now I'm currently on the database client marketing, but to make this thorough, we can do you'll have of course the database schema and then the table name, and of course the table will actually exist. Whereas if I make up a table, let's say I make up a table Durka, it doesn't exist. So one of the ways in which you can find out if a table exists is by using the object ID and basically putting in the table name. And what happens is you'll see the is not null. Okay, this is the explanation for people not just looking for the answer. Um, it's null if it doesn't exist. If it exists, so the other one was delay table, um, then you will actually get a number. <coughs> That's one of the most effective ways. Understand, by the way, this also works too in SQL Server 2012. I'm using 2008 right now. Um, there is either it's either 2000 or 2005 that it's slightly different here. Um, but you'll check. I worked at some company and they were looking if the object ID was greater than zero. So that was what they were looking at instead. <clears throat> But they had a different edition outside of 2008 and 2012. The other way to do that is you can use the if exists. Um, so this is going to see if it actually exists. That's this clause. And we'll do begin print. Um, I'm just going to do it one time around. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to select star from information dot tables where the table name equals delay table. So this is the query. Is it going to return anything if, if it exists in this clause right here? I will print the table exists. And just to prove, if we do, um, it doesn't print anything because that table doesn't exist. So those are the two ways you can do that. Um, this can be very useful. Another one is uh, this can be very useful when you're populating a staging table. If your table is solid, the other one as well is you can do it with a temporary table. Uh, so, for instance, if we create table hash. So, if we create this table. So we're going to create a global variable table, and then we select uh, the object ID. Now this is going to be a little bit different because temp tables are stored in uh, tempdb. So, and this happens a lot in queries. For instance, if a stored procedure uh, calls a table, let's say, well, let's say this time it was an actual table. A stored procedure builds a table, populates it with data. Uh, the very first part of a stored procedure builds a table, but it breaks halfway through. And then somebody restarts a stored procedure. And again, it's a full table in this example. It's going to break again because the very first part of it is creating the table. So sometimes you'll, if you, you'll see this in stored procedures, someone will write that, they'll say, you know, if that exists, and then they'll say, if it exists, um, then they'll proceed with the procedure here as if the table exists, or maybe they, they may do uh, drop table um, Durka as a case point. There is no table Durka, so it should throw an error. And then else, Actually, they'll just leave it like that, and then of course they'll start populating the table. So um, that's that's where you see this a lot. 
This also can work if you're looking for values in the table, though that's not quite as effective, and I've seen too many errors when people do it that way, where they're like, if exist, select star from table where, and then they'll, on this right here, they'll put a filter clause um, with this if exist, but they'll look for data, and the problem with that is that if it differs by one column, they'll end up with a duplicate without realizing it. So that's how you can check and see if a table exists. Uh, those are two ways. There's There are other ways, but those are two very effective ways. And uh, like I said, it's very useful if you are in a sort procedure or through a process building a table, um, populating with data, and then dropping at the table. Before building the table, check first and see if it exists. And if it exists, drop the table if that's going to be the very first part of your procedure or process.